Ladies and gentlemen, the movement control order is expected to cause undue financial constraints and hardship, especially to individuals and entrepreneurs having fixed monthly installments with various banks and financial institutions. Hence, the automatic moratorium or automora was introduced by all DFIs to eligible customers by providing automatic deferment of your installment as required from a period of six months effective 1st April to 30th September 2020. What are the criteria to enjoy this automora? How does it benefit us as customers in the long run and its impact to BFIs and the industry as a whole? To discuss the topic, automora concept and impact, let me introduce to you our presenter, the Islamic banking specialist, Tuan Haji Abdurrahman Mama Yusuf. Tuan Haji Abdurrahman is currently the head of Islamic product and business development at OCBC Al Amin Bank Berhad. He is also the deputy president of Chartered Institute of Islamic Finance Professional. He joined OCBC Al Amin in the Commercial Bank Department in 2008 and subsequently headed the Sharia Department from 2013 to 2019. Tuan Haji Rahman is graduated in the Masters of Islamic Finance and Chartered Islamic Finance Professional from INSAFE and also has an MBA and Bachelor in Finance from the USA. Before we start, here's a reminder once again to ensure all microphones are in mute and your camera to disable. Please type your question in the chat box and it will be addressed at the end. Without further ado, please give a warm welcome to Tuan Haji Abdul Rahman Muhammad Yusuf. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and a very good morning. How's things doing? How's the MCO have been treating your life? Despite the MCO, it's still BAU. People still go, still working, work from home, training online and stuff. It's a new normal now. It's a new norm. So with that, uh, uh, I would like to uh, present today for the next 30 minutes, walk you through about this uh, current hot topic with regard to the auto moratorium, the concept and impacts, what in store for us as far as uh, consumers are concerned. And also, um, I also touch base with regard to the, the impact on the industry as a whole. So basically, moratorium is nothing new. It's part of a rescue plan. It has been undertaken uh, by bank as part of the, their rescue plan in rescheduling, restructuring, and reinstatement. So there are various strategies that's available for the bank in their rescue plan for reinstatement. Let's say, for instance, you know, if your account has been frozen due to legal action and whatnot, when there's a negotiation, when there's some kind of partial state, uh, settlement, so your account will be reinstated. Rescheduling likewise, when customers have some financial constraint because of the monthly installment, what the bank will do, the bank will extend the tenor. When the bank extend the tenor, your automatically your installment will be reduced because of the extended tenor. So some bank also use moratorium as a payment holiday, especially during um, year end event, year end celebration, you know. Um, or for some religious and cultural celebration, they provide some kind of one or two months to provide you with some additional cash flow. You know, instead of paying your monthly obligation, you can use it for, for some other priorities. And also restructuring certain overdrafts, let's say for instance, cash I, which got problem of even credit card. There is also that kind of what you call it a restructuring. It will be converted to term financing. So these are all the uh, part of the rescue plan. But auto, auto moratorium is something different. Different in the sense that it's not really to rescue the customer, but it is just a benefit given to all consumers because of the COVID-19 stuff, you know, MCO, movement control order. So people are tight. Some people may even be retrenched. Some people may even have to have uh, have to get a salary cut. You know, some people could not do business. So because of that, uh, auto moratorium uh, was introduced by the regulators to all banks. Please use auto moratorium to all your consumer. So irrespective. But then there is an eligible 
criteria in the Senate is very simple. The eligibility criteria is that you have to be, the facility has to be in, in, in Malaysian ringgit. It has to be in Malaysian ringgit and it should not be in the area. You know, on the 1st April, it should not be in the area more than 90 days. So other criteria in, in the FAQ, you can read it in the, in the social media and whatnot, you know, in, in the webs, regulatory webs, you know. Uh, other basic criteria is purely is, uh, individual and also SMEs. Corporate and commercial will not be included because it will be on a case-to-case -case basis depending on the negotiation between the relationship manager and the respective uh, corporate client. So the effective date is from 1st April until six months after that, until 30th September. Okay, so the financing involved be house financing, vehicle financing, personal financing and other type of term financing where there is a monthly uh, payment required. Okay, so uh, that's the general condition. Technical condition, of course, I will walk you through with regards to some of the terminologies, some of the uh, strategies, you know, with regards to uh, Islamic versus conventional, how they look at it in terms of the, the, the pricing use, flat rate, fixed rate, floating rate, variable rate, and the, the mechanism of charging the profits for Islamic banking and for interest for conventional, accrued, compounded, and stuff. Huh? Okay. Um, as I move uh, along, so basically the justification of moratorium is to relieve, to relieve individuals, SMEs, you know, with some kind of a, a cash surplus to you to spend on other priorities. Instead of paying the bank monthly in your house financing and so forth, let's say you have house financing, car financing, personal financing. So it relieves you for that particular month in April, May, until September for that amount to be used, you know. To meet other subsistence needs. Yeah? So it's it's your call whether you want to take it or not. If need be, take it. If you feel that you know you are not being affected for it by this uh, by this uh, MCO and stuff, then don't take it. But from the from the the financial perspective, from the uh, financial perspective, when they take when we take into account the opportunity loss, opportunity cost, taking into account the time value of money and whatnot, it's better to take. Because what you have now is value more than what, you know, if you don't have, you know, yeah. the, the present value of money. What the value now is much higher than you to receive it in the, in the subsequent years later. Uh, so the benefit is that uh, to the customer, it is your cash flow. To ensure continuity for business, at least they can roll their capital without having to pay the bank for the next six months. You know, and also to avoid certain kind of legal action. Huh? Legal action is send that, you know, you receive all those legal notice of demand, the reminders and stuff, okay? So it can avoid legal action and it will also be structured based on your affordability. So the win-win situation that is here is that the customer will eat their cash flow, will, will ensure continuity, business as usual, and the bank would benefit too. Instead of the customer, for not paying three months, it will be converted to non-performing financing. So under this moratorium, it is not. The account is still considered as current, okay? And then to save the bank from having to do some, some provision, some right back of uh, specific provision and whatnot, because those account which is not paid three consecutive months, the income from that particular account should not be earned. You have to put aside, you have to put aside under, you know, Profit and suspend and so forth. So these are purely technical on the part of the bank. So they, it's also benefit the bank. It's a win-win kind of situation. As you move on, uh, with regard to auto moratorium, uh, you heard a lot about this rule 78, the flat rate, you know, fixed rate and floating rate. These are all the different kind of method the bank in charging the customer. Okay, the the, the flat rate is also known. The rule 78 is also known as the straight line method. You know, whereby the profit Upfront is being embedded back to the principal, especially for your car financing. Fixed rate is totally fixed throughout the tenor, irrespective of where the movement of the BFR, it will not be affected. It's fixed already throughout the tenor. And uh, for floating rate, yes, it's back to BFR, back to Clibo and so forth, but it's more of long-term structure. It's kind of risky if you were to take fixed rate over the long, longer, longer tenor. So the facility using that flat rate is more, mostly industrial high purchase, personal financing, car financing, and so forth. For fixed rate and floating rate, yeah, 
You name it, house financing, vehicle financing, likewise, can be both fixed and floating. Depends on the, uh, the, the offer from the individual bank. Okay? And um, other basic features for uh, Rule 78, fixed rate and floating rate is that, you know, the duration for fixed, for flat rate, Rule 78 is normally short term, maybe five, the most is maybe five years, maybe more, depending also. Fixed rate is short to medium and floating rate is more of a long term channel, especially for uh, asset financing. And uh, Sharia contract involved with regard to the flat rate, the most popular one is the ITAP, al ijarah Tumah al Bait, and also Ijarah Mutahya Bit Tamlik. These are all the lease based kind of uh, facility. And for fixed rate, yes, of course, it's more of a sale based. Commodity Murabaha used to be very popular last time, BBA, okay, Hina Murabaha. You know, these are all the Sharia contracts. For floating rates, you can have can have a combination between a sale base with selling with, with ceiling price as well as the lease base or even the equity base under diminishing musharaka. So we have a hybrid of facility for Sharia right now across all banks. Okay. As you move on, so, uh, the option that uh, given uh, under this auto moratorium is that whether you maintain payment and extend tenor or you increase payment maintain tenor so it's two things maintain payment extend tenor you maintain your payment one one thousand a month but you you extend the tenor you know maybe six months after maturity or you increase payment from post mora until until uh, maturity or maybe you you make payment uh bullet payment that could be also increased payment so for each particular strategy you have a different impact with regard to the pricing with regard to rule 78 fixed rate floating rate and whatnot so the the, the worst impact is of course on both uh, flat rates and, and and fixed rate because uh, there's an impact of what you call the the, the the expected credit loss ecl impact on gross provision okay so these are all the, the impact is technical impact that has to be faced by the institution in extending the mora. I, I go in detail on that shortly. Bear with me. Um, basically, before we, we, we decide whether to take or not the mora, let us understand the pricing mechanism and the reducing balance. Okay. For reducing balance, uh, example here given to, uh, to you, if you have a principal of 100,000, a profit rate of 5.5%, for 10 years, okay, so the monthly installment will be based, will be calculated, you can, you can use the financial calculator or you can use the annuity table, TRR annuity table. When you factor it in, the 100,000 monthly payment is 1085 per month. So what happened is that during your first year under reducing balance, your balance is 100,000, but when you make payment of 1085, not all goes to reduce your balance. Okay, the one that goes to reduce your balance is just the principal portion, six to seven. The, the, the profit pay portion for Islamic banking or interest portion for conventional will be added back. So the amount reduced in year two will not be uh, by 1,085, 1, it will be only reduced uh, by month two, we not we only reduce by 630. So as you go on, you can see that, you know, your profit uh, portion paid to the bank is getting lesser and lesser and the principal is getting bigger and bigger that's why at the beginning you know it's, it's like a balloon kind of thing so towards the end the amount that you pay 1085 more of it will go to the principal instead of going to the profit side this is reducing balance it's very uh, very practical for home financing for long-term financing asset financing and so forth but not uh, popular for, for, for short term, okay? Now, uh, if you were to compare Rule 78, flat rate, and also reducing balance, assuming here, let's say, if you have a, a financing principle of 50,000 on a 10% profit rate, you know, to make it simple, duration of 12 months, you are, you are, you are getting financing for 50,000 table in the next 12 months, so one month, you know, for Rule 78 and flat in, uh, interest method is one month you have to pay is 4,583. How do I get that? 
So under flat rate rule 78, it's just 50,000 multiplied by 10%, multiplied by one year is 5,000. 5,000 over 12, you get 4583.33. So, so what happened is that under rule 78, the first month that you make payment, if you make payment of 4583.33, 706, uh, the, the, the total paid is 769. What happened that out of that portion 769, 416 will be, oh, sorry, 769 is the interest paid. 4583 less 769 will be the interest paid. As you can see under rule 78, assuming if you were to settle that particular financing, uh, the, uh, the 5,000 uh, profit portion, if you were to settle in, in month, month six, you are already paying a profit of 3,653.85. So the bank would recoup a lot on the income first, then reducing your principal. That's under rule 78, especially for car financing and whatnot. Okay? And for flat rate, it's the same. So what happened under flat rate is just, just merely 50,000 plus 5,000 the profit amount. You just divide it by 12. Okay, You just divide it by 12 and you get 416.67. Unlike rule 78, you have to divide by 78 times 12 for the first month. For the second month, will be divided by 78 times 11 third month and so on. On the 12th month will be 5,000 divided by 78 times 12. So the, the, the profit portion is very minimal, 64. So when it, for reducing balance method, it's different. For reducing balance method, the uh, installment that you get will be based on some uh, annuity, some, some annuity table. The annuity table for 50,000 table for 12th month is that 4,395. So on the first month, what happened is that the 5,000 uh, uh, profit portion will be divided by 12, you get 416.67. But on the second month, the amount of profit will not be as a flat rate. It will be reduced. What happened is that the 50,000 uh, uh, financing, you will less 4395, you will add back 416.67 being the profit portion for that particular month, and you multiply by the by the factor 10 percent over 12 that's where you get 383.51 so you, as you can see under reducing balance it reduced tremendously and the cost saving compared to this three of rule 78 and flat rate you are paying 5000 for 50000 principal 10 percent for 12 months but for reducing balance you are only paying 2749 so that is different you need to understand this to see what advantage that you have if you were to take the moratorium or not okay let's move on now the other thing that uh, you have to to to, to bear in, in mind with regard to this to this moratorium is that the the the, the impacts on the present value and the net present value okay um by taking the like i mentioned that if you have the opportunity even though if you don't need that you know uh, the amount it's better to have it now because it is worth much higher Okay. Assuming uh, if you have a 5,000 now, the value is 5,000. Yeah, I can spend 5,000 now. But if the 5,000, you only get it in year five, in year five, your 5,000 is only valued 3790 if taking into assumption that the cost of capital is 10%. Cost of capital. Because with the 5,000 now, if you invest in some good return investment, could be AFB and whatnot, if not 10%, could be 7%. So, in getting 5,000 later on, you know, what will happen, you get less. So that is what being applied under, 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 under Islamic banking, yet, like what's for conventional banking, the cash flow concept, the 5,000 that you're going to receive for the next, for the next five years, the 1,000 you get paid is only 910. This will be taken into consideration in, in calculating the, uh, uh, the, 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 the EI effective, uh, ERR, effective uh, interest rate, profit rate, and so forth. So for a mere in the investment of 5,000, okay, the, the, the value, the, the, the present value for that investment based on 10% cost of capital for the next five years is only 3790. And if your investment, you expect a return of 5,000, your net NPV is already negative. Just imagine, for instance, if the bank ever were to give auto moratorium for one year, the bank will not really be getting this 910. This 910 will be zero. So there's more cost. It will be the net, the bottom line, the NPV will be 
will be blocked. Okay, the, the cost that the bank have to pay have to bear. Now, <clears throat> as you move on, um, like I mentioned just now, the decision whether to extend or not depend on your individual uh, financial uh, situation, your, your financial appetite, and so forth. So uh, there are various options available depending on the policy of each bank. For extend tenor, you got two options. You know, this is a, the rule of thumb. Extend tenor, you got two options. Whether installment amount remain even after after September, you pay the same amount of installment. Okay, as installment amount remain even after the the extended tenor, because this when you extend the tenor, you pay the same amount. So. Here, the bank would absorb the cost. Okay, uh, there's, there's also other opportunity whereby in extending the tunnel with increased installment, increase on installment after the maturity. If you have a financing um, to be matured in the next 60 months, it will be on the 61st month you start paying the, 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 the amount that has been deferred. Okay, so for extend tunnel, there are, there are two choices uh, for, for consumers to choose depending on the bank whether they offer it or not. Okay, it, it depends. This is for knowledge purposes, you know. But for to maintain tenor, there are also two types in maintaining tenor. If you decided that I'm going to, I'm not going to uh, uh, get my my facility extended, I want to clear off my liability. Fine. So the deferred installment, you got to pay bullet. That means to say a balloon. Bullet means, and in your final installment, you will pay the. Let's say if your installment is one thousand, one thousand plus the six month deferred. 6,000. So you have to pay 7,000 in your last installment. That is bullet. Okay. And it's, it's, uh, I will show you shortly. It's more less a cost to you. Or maybe if you don't want to have bullet, you can have to maintain tenor, you know, so that it expires at the same time. Is that to increase your installment on post moratorium month? Post moratorium month will be in October. So come October, the, assuming you have 6,000 uh, deferred. Uh, amount that six thousand will be a portion throughout the remaining life of that particular facility. So it's more more uh, more practical to customer as well as well as uh, to bank. You know, you don't have to come up with bullet payment just like that. Now, uh, uh, to show you an example here uh, on how Mora, how the cost of fund has been an issue at the moment. Assuming if you have a monthly installment of one thousand. And assuming the cost that you contracted, this is cost of fund. You can use the cost contracted with the bank could be five percent, six percent. I'm here basing on the two percent cost of fund assumption. Eh? Uh, so for the next two years, my cost of fund will be one thousand times two percent. Times it will be about forty ringgit for the next two years, from April 2020 until October, February 2022. So until February 2022, because it's been extended. So your your April installment will only be made good on in March 2022. 20, so the, the the cost here is about 40 ringgit for every 1,000. So here, as you can see, where do I get 1.67? 40 ringgit for one year divided by 24 months. The period assuming remaining to maturity is 24 months for this particular case. Okay, so it's 1.67 cost per month. So the total cost for the six month for 1,000 installment is you know 240 how do i get 240 it's merely the 40 ringgit i multiply by the six by the six uh six month uh, uh uh moratorium so the total cost that the bank to bear under under their cost of fund assuming cost of fund is two percent is how much is 240 based on 1000 installment based on two percent cost of fund based on remaining to maturity 24 months how about house financing if the remaining maturity is 10 years 120 months if the house financing the remaining maturity is maybe 20 years which is 240 months just imagine what will be the cost here if the bank were to absorb in, in extending the tenor to customer right uh, as i move on uh, there are also other options where i mentioned bullet payment on maturity Bullet payment on maturity, it simply means that for this particular portion, from maturity to extended three months, nothing as compared to the uh, earlier one. You have you still involve cost here, 1.67, and your cost is 240. But when you pay bullet, you have no cost here. So your cost will be reduced by the proportionate amount of 
this uh, month, March 22 to August 22. So 40 minus 1.67, here will be 40 minus 1.67 minus 1.67. That's where I get the second table here. If you to pay bullet, the amount will be reduced, not very significant, but from 240 to 205 ringgit, basing on the same assumption of 1,000 per month installment, 2% cost of fund, and you have the remaining tenor of 23 months. Why 23 months? Because it's not being extended. From April 20 to February 22, it's 23 months. So there's a cost saving of about 35 ringgit. This is you if you are to opt for bullet payment, if you are given that particular uh, alternative, right? Uh, if if not, you have no choice whether you want to take the, the extended tunnel or you are, if you have a choice of getting bullet, you're going to save 35 ringgit both based on this assumption. Right. Now let us move on. Assuming if you have uh, you have enough cash flow, you said okay, the six thousand that I owe the bank, I want to start paying on month October, on month October, which is the post moratorium period until maturity. So in month October, you have to pay not one thousand, you have to pay one thousand plus the six thousand divided by here yeah, the, the the calculation. All right. So the 6,000 divided by being a portion for the next 18 months. 6,000 divided by 18 months okay, from October 20 until February 22 is 18 months. You divide by 6,000 divided by 18 months, which is 300 plus, 333. So your monthly installment from October 2020 will be 1,333. And because of the amount that you pay 333, uh, you, you pay in October, there's the cost saving. Remember, the earlier cost was, was 1.69, well, 1.67, but because of the 300 uh, amount additional that you pay in October, so there's a cost saving of 333 times 2% 2 times 12 months. Okay, so the, 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 the cost saving is 56, 56 cents per month. If you were to add it up, all the cost, uh, cost saving, it will be 85. So 85 cost saving compared to bullet, which is 205, same thing, nothing is paid because you are not taking any extension. So you don't have to incur any cost from maturity to extended tenor. It's 205 for bullet, but for uh, what you call it, increased installment from post maturity, 205, you less it by 85. So you have uh, the total cost of uh, to, to the bank, uh, it's about 120 ringgit that the bank have to, 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 to incur if you were to opt for Cost saving from increased installment. So basically, these are the available alternatives uh, to, to to you, to me, to individual, to business, and so forth. So the the appetite is yours. The choice is yours whether to take it or not. But like I mentioned just now, the moratorium is given to each financial constraint. Why not take it? Take it because you can use that money for something else during this uh, during this COVID. The post COVID could be extended until next year. Can you use that money for other uh, main priority, you know, to ensure life still move on? But for those who may may not need the particular cost saving, but from the financial perspective, it is still good for you, okay? Because the value is value. The six thousand that you have right now, even though you don't spend it, you can put in any uh, investment instrument to the ASP and whatnot to generate an income of six percent out of that six thousand. No, but then the six percent income you have to you have to do some calculation compared to your the cost that you have to involve if you have to extend the channel. So this is merely a basic, call it a general idea on the calculation with regard to the cost saving and whatnot. If you ask me whether it is necessary for the bank to 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 choose the customer, it depends on the appetite of the bank. There, if the bank feels that they can absorb, it's not that painful because their cost structure is much cheaper. Their funding from the depositor or from from companies from institution is much cheaper, then they can absorb it. But this is actually the cost. More often than not, uh, uh, under this moratorium, the bank will be given. Uh, the, 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 what, the bank is given 
they are depending on their policy what they want to charge but most they should not they should not charge higher than the cost earlier early contracted during the in, in, during the uh, during the at, the at the onset you know when they offer you that particular penalty what is the cost uh, what is the, the price so the bank can even take that particular uh, pricing in order to charge for the extended for the extended you know like i mentioned here just now here is based on cost of fund which is two percent your offer letter is five percent or six percent so we have to do some calculation we have to uh, six percent is there so of course we will be much higher huh? but then even though it's six percent if you take it now in other you know good return investment not many anyway but at least you are at par there's nothing nothing to lose okay if you don't need that money but if you need that money then you have, you have to take it right because as far as the bank is concerned uh in, in giving financing the, the the financing amount doesn't come from their pocket you know it comes from the depositors money it comes from the from the uh, investors money from the shareholders money this may be by, by providing but by, by pro let's say this is one thousand right let's see if the economy is one million how much the amount that the, the cost that the bank have to bear with the moratorium you don't pay the bank you don't you don't pay the, firm. the bank still has to pay the deposit the deposit is 1.67 assuming that the, the only cost so because of that uh, why with regard to the uh, moratorium uh, um, uh, the bank has to charge the the, the, the cost of the, the, the cost back to that whether it's got a fund, whether it's contracted uh, rate and, and so forth. So basically, uh, 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 from, from the Sharia perspective too, uh, with regards to this uh, moratorium, when it is just merely extension of tenor, when it's merely ex extension of tenor, and it's a lease-based kind of financing, so notification is a distribution. But when it is of Still based like Murabaha, commodity Murabaha, and whatnot, you know, when it only breach the selling price, it has to be accepted by customer. There has to be a new card. There has to be a new card offer and accepted from the from the Sharia perspective. I guess uh, that's about all for my presentation today. Uh, so if you have uh, any question, you can uh, voice it out and you can even uh, uh, type it. Yeah? The moderator would, would be pleased to entertain the, 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 the question to, to me. Thank you. Any okay, thank, you, uh, thank you, Tan Haji, uh, for the presentation. I will now read out some questions from the participants. Um, the first question with this um, from uh, Izan. Uh, the question about the cash flow concept. I thought that uh, I thought the auto mora supposedly to ease the burden who are affected during MCO as people can't go out and do business and do not have income to pay the debt. It is not to make uh, investment for those who are not affected and who are who have monthly income. If invested in the current situation, would we be able to get higher profit? Let's say comparing to the investment that we can make by taking mora, is it beneficial? Do we have to pay higher profit after moratorium period? And that's a question. Okay, uh, good, very good question. Uh, like I mentioned, whether to take or not, uh, it depends on individuals' uh, financial decision, yeah, their financial appetite, their risk appetite, you know, and stuff. So what happened is that for those who don't need that particular mora, but you have six thousand in my example here. Right? You have six thousand here. The six thousand that you have here. If you were to invest in a good income instrument, okay, you have to make some kind of calculation. Uh, assuming if ASP is paying, uh, I don't know what they're going to pay with this, with this more, maybe less than 5%. Last year was, I think, 7% or 6%. Okay, if 6%, you can get 6,000, 6% from, from ASB assumption, okay, and your cost is only 2%, so you might as well take it because you make a profit of 4%, right? Uh, the, your question also that saying that the, the small up program is to ease the financial burden. Yes, it has been eased. From April to September, you don't have to pay 1,000. You don't have to pay 1,000 times 6,000 6, that you can use to meet other uh, 
more what you call it uh, priority other other for your subsistence need and so forth just imagine you don't have to pay 1000 and the cost that the bank have to pay until march 2022 where you make your first your your your, your installment will be extended for one month and you make the payment on 30 march 2022 so it is your burden because for the next 24 months under this example you don't have to you have you can forget about the six thousand you only make the payment during the extension period okay but of course there is some uh, cost element there but for those who don't need it you already make a, a four percent profit based on this particular uh, assumption yes i hope i answered your question uh, all right, uh, Tuan Haji, another question from our FB Live um, audience from Fatma Majnum. Uh, Assalamualaikum, uh, Tuan Haji Abdul Rahman. Uh, so when BNM announced the first Mora, was they overlooked on this uh, high purchase restriction and Islamic financing in, uh, limitation? Fatma, Fatma, I know you are. <laughs> it's happened to be my student. Anyway, a very good question, Fatma, but I, I can't answer on behalf of bank or even on behalf of the regulator oh, but then again if you are to look at the first announcement okay there's some alibi the first time announcement saying that auto moratorium given to all unless you want to opt out it makes the thing easy because within a short span of time the bank will not receive that installment i think it was maybe maybe less than a week so it was like an auto mora those who don't want to, to participate you have to contact the bank you know but those who silent you are already in but in the announcement it mentioned it mentioned that the details of the arrangement of the payment and so forth will be negotiated with the bank during the mora period that means from 1st april until 30th september each bank can come up with their terms what are what are the the, the, the repayment terms like I mentioned just now, whether it's bullets, whether it's extended tenor, whether increased installment after the post mora. So it will be, the bank is given throughout the, 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 the mora period to, uh, to, make a, to make a call. But then again, comes May, uh, 30th April, I believe. Uh, so after several, uh, maybe 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 uh, uh, each bank have their already calculated their, their cost of fund structure and so forth. And then they come out with a strategy that, yeah, it involves the cost. But it was not mentioned earlier just because it's just a general statement. But the detailed part of it, whether to convert, whether it involves it impact on sharing or not, the selling price and whatnot, that one will be detailed out later. But what important most is that for the public to enjoy that 1,000 relief, in my example, to enjoy it. Because the, the even the MCO extended more than one month. So it provides some kind of a, a relief already. With it out tomorrow. I hope I answer your question, Patma Majinum. Okay, the next question from uh, FB Live also, uh, Tuan Haji, from Sam Shirat. Um, how does bank compute the modified loss as required under MFRS 9 as I'm subject to high profit payment? Okay, with regard to the, the modified installment, uh, I just based on a simple calculation here. Uh, hang on. Eh? The modified installment, based on my calculation here, is that you know uh, the six thousand deferred that uh, not being paid being being apportioned throughout the throughout the, the remaining month from October twenty until uh, February twenty two, which is about eighteen months. So you are paying additional one by three hundred and thirty three, one thousand plus three three hundred and thirty three, and also you have to add. The, the cost involved, which is 0 0.56. So with regard, when you mentioned about the uh, IFRS, uh, whereby in terms of the reporting for accounting, uh, accounting concept is concerned, of course, the, as far as this particular case, the, it, the bank will report a, a loss there because uh, a loss because of this, uh, the, 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 what you call it, the uh, estimated credit loss is there. When you when you when you account those the compounding uh, amount and so forth, but then again it is uh, allowable because it's regulatory requirement that you got you got to meet. The losses reported is not because of un, because of uh, over declared and whatnot. It's because of uh, this particular tip. 
because it's unique for this particular. It, 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 it's uh, it's uh, uh, what you call it a regulatory issue that the bank have to follow in order to defer the particular cash flow after the mora. Yeah, I hope I, I answer your question with regards to this. Yeah. Next question. Uh, next question, Tuan Haji. Uh, a question from Encik Firdaus. Uh, can Encik Rahman share on the concept of accrued profit in a moratorium? Okay. Uh, in a moratorium, with regard to the accrued profit, it in my earlier slide, um, if, if there, uh, hang on. Uh, yep. Okay. When, when you talk about accrued profit, assuming, like I mentioned here, okay, 50,000 is your is your uh, uh, principal amount, 10% uh, profit rate, okay, and for 12 months, it will be uh, 5,000 divided by 12, a simple flat rate method, okay, this is the amount that you got to pay every month for one six. So, and accrued expenses is that, you know, you still pay for one six, it will not be added back to the principal. Unlike for under reducing balance method, okay, whereby if you have a, a what you call it a 50,000, 50,000, please here look at this particular slide at the assumption here 50,000. If you make your first month installment 4,395.79, you add back, you have to add back the 416.67 big interest, uh, pay, you know, for that particular month by 10%, it becomes 383. For accrued, your 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 subsequent, uh, what you call it, subsequent calculation of the profit should also be based on 50,000. It should not be based on what you call 50,000, let add back to the uh, profit portion here. Pro when compounded is that, for each month that you don't pay, that particular profit portion will be added back to your outstanding balance and the rate will be calculated based on the new increased balance. So that is compounded. It is tremendous. But it's for accrued, let's say for, for six months, for six months uh, tenor extended, in, in my example here, for this six month tenor, when it is accrued, it will still based on 1.67. The 1.67 will not be added back to your balance if it added back just imagine if your balance is 20000 plus 1.67 that the next month will be 2167 you know multiply by 2% and it will be it will be blotted but here it will be the same amount of principal will be calculated the same amount of of, of principal based on the 2% so uh, i hope i answer your question question in comparing between accrued and compounded islamic has got nothing to do with compounded. It is already it is already a uh, uh, Sharia non compliant with regard to that. But even conventional, also most banks they are willing to forego the, the the compounding effect depending on their risk appetite and cost structure and their strategy and so forth. Uh, the bank could even decide to 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 give way with regard to the compounding just for this more period, right? <clears throat> Uh, okay, another question uh, from uh, Miss Yana. Understand that the bank is allowed to charge the cost to customer. However, people start complain about this arrangement, and um, the YB MOF asked the bank to consider about it. What is your view? Uh, oh, good question. Um, of course, uh, the as far as uh, uh, I can't answer on behalf of. Uh, whatever organization that I'm associated with. But to me, um, it depends on the on the, the, the rich appetite. It depends on the cost structure of the bank. It depends on their, their, their strategies and whatnot, whether to absorb this particular cost or not, because the impact could be devastating. You know? uh, it's like, uh, if you, it's like, you know, saving someone else soul at the expense of another person. The other person is who? I mean, I already mentioned to you. The funny thing that the bank gave to the to the customer, to their customer, there's a cost attached to it. The cost that the bank has to pay. To whom? To the depositors. We could be one of the depositors, assuming if you, to the depositors. The, invest, uh, the, the depositors, the, the, the investors, to other bankers and so forth. And also to make to make good their, their, what, their, 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 their 
their, their profit. Because more, as you can see from this particular uh, pricing, look at that, the component of pricing. Assuming if Clibo is 2%, in my particular uh, example, 2%, the bank have to keep aside, you know, 2% as statutory reserve requirement, SRR. So 2% of 2% is another 0 0.04 cost there. You know, because the, the bank can't, can't give finance, or they have to keep certain portion. And the bank have to keep the liquidity uh, liquidity coverage ratio of 13% of the 2% SRR, which come to about 0 0.26. And apart from that, the cost of fund, when you add this all, is 2.5. That is just cost to cost. It's like a gross profit, you know. It's a cost of goods sold in, in, in accounting. It's a, it's, a, it's a cost of goods sold is 2.50. Not to mention the operating cost, the overhead, the staff, you know, the, the utilities, the, the rental premises, the depreciation and whatnot. And, and, and last but not least is the spread that the bank provide to customer. Rest assured, the auto moratorium mostly have a greater impact on the housing. But as you know, housing as far as the cost is regulated. The bank don't charge high cost. So uh, all these have to be taken into consideration before the bank can really decide how so to, to, to absorb. But still, the recommendation from, um, from, from, the, from the government, well, it depends on the individual bank. So if it's mandatory for the bank to absorb all, so like I mentioned, it's saving one soul at the expense of another person, depositors, investors, shareholders, and so forth. The staff. Thank you. I hope I answered your question. <clears throat> Okay, Tonaji, uh, there's two participants here asking the same question on page mm -hmm. for page 17 of the slide. Uh, with the new uh, card required, will the profit use is also change uh, according to the current rate? Uh, the question by Puan Zarina and also Puan Maria. Okay, good Puan Zarina and Puan Maria. What happened under Sharia is that it depends on the contract, okay? When it involves a sale-based contract, under a sale-based contract, uh, 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 if definitely when you extend your 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 selling price will be will be breached will be, will be busted. So with that uh, increase in the selling price, uh, the bank can no longer hold to that old contract. So a new contract will have to be signed. Okay, a new contract to be signed and accepted by the customer. Okay, if you decided not to sign, then be it up it out by, by what i mean is that if you feel that uh, it's going to be a, a higher cost then you can opt out but and the way i understand is that for the new contract under sharia the the rate should be based on the old old contract you know uh, at least provide some relief but uh, as it is right now if you were uh, if you were to ask me the current rate is much cheaper than the previous one that you contracted two or three years ago, or even five years ago. So uh, there is a plus or minus. If you were to take the current rate, it could be cheaper, you know, than uh, 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 much better for 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 the for the customer because previous one was a little a little bit too high. But if the current rate today is much higher, then will be the customer will be at a at a loss. So these are the things that uh, I hope my presentation will open the mind of all whether you have financial accounting background or economic background or not, to understand all this uh, financial terminology, financial jargon and so forth. Yeah. Okay, it seems like uh, this is a hot, uh, seems like this is a hot topic, Tuan Haji. Uh, there's lots of questions here. Um, they also ask about uh, how does cost of fund relates with uh, modification loss? How the cost of fund relate to modification? modification loss oh modification loss so like i mentioned in my example here modification loss <clears throat> for the extended tenor so uh for the cost of fund that the bank the bank charge uh it depends on the strategy the cost structure and the risk appetite the bank can charge based on the current uh, cost of fund if the bank charge based on the current cost of fund it will still be it still be a loss to the bank because previously contracted was a little bit higher. Now it's maybe 2% previously was about maybe three or 4%. So it will be a loss to the bank. But if the bank were to be to based on the, 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 the previous uh, uh, cost structure, then uh, it's, 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 not, it's no loss as far as cost of fund is concerned. 
but uh, uh, if the bank were to charge based on the contracted rate, so you have to understand that the cost of fund rate and the contracted rate. Contracted rate is after you add on all this, the 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 SRR, SCR, you know, the the, the spread margin and all this stuff. If it's based on that, of course, at least uh, uh, the bank will make will make. If, if BAU, it's like like having the same profit as anticipated as anticipated before the mora and also after the mora because the the cost has already been added with all the all the spread and so forth. But then again, even you add to that, there is the, this element of what you call the, the, the ERR element, the effective interest rate element, because of the compounding effect, because the, 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 the payment that the bank get will be much later after the, after the, after the post-maturity, so there's a the discounting impact there to the bank. <clears throat> Uh, next question uh, will be, uh, is there a chance uh, that modification laws don't have to be adopted by banks? What are the criteria for the bank to adopt a modification laws approach? Uh, under modification laws approach, uh, this is purely, I would say, the depending on the bank risk appetite, the bank cost structure, the bank policies and so forth. Because uh, this particular uh, losses, it has to be uh, re reported, you know, uh, because it was contracted earlier uh, at much at a much higher rate, and the bank has to absorb all these particular losses. Because in 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 assessing the the performance of the bank uh, from from the external auditor would ask what happened uh, because of these losses, the expected credit losses here. Uh, it could be devastating, but then again, like I mentioned, uh, this is what you call it requirement uh, for this particular situation. Probably there could be some kind of an some kind of a provis provision given, saying that you know the, the losses is uh, it's more of a paper rather than the the, the actual losses to the bank. <clears throat> Okay, so Haji, uh, this is the last question yeah. that I'm going to read out. Um, do we have to inform the bank if we want to pay uh, extra after the mora? Yeah, uh, for this particular purpose, each of us uh, will be receiving notification from our bank. So they will uh, inform us what are the alternatives available. So the alternative av available, like I mentioned, could be uh, all these four, could be a combination of two, could be uh, installment increase after maturity, or maybe uh, this is to extend the tenor. You only pay after the, the maturity of your facility, or could be that you know a combination of between installment area increase after maturity and increased installment on post moratorium. I believe I believe these two is much more popular. Either you pay after the maturity, six months after the maturity, uh, you 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 defer. Could be twenty four months later. Could be sixty months later. Or if you have a cash right now, you know you only pay after the after the moratorium, which is in 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 October, which is uh, this particular uh, option, increase installment on post moratorium. More often than not, I believe uh, uh, the bank will send either through SMS, through email, through phone call, and whatnot. From there, uh, you can check uh, what are the alternatives uh, provided for 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 you. Uh, it will be different. It, could, it couldn't be the same. Every bank have their own, uh, I believe, have their own strategy. But all, all uh, rest assured it is comply with the uh, with the regulatory compliance as well as the uh, as what wanted by by the Sharia. <clears throat> okay, uh, Tuan Haji. Um, with that, uh, I end this session. Uh, this Q and A session. Um, uh, for ladies and gentlemen, we may revisit this session on IFIM uh, YouTube channel. Uh, please subscribe the channel for our latest video posting update. I have typed the link address in the chat box for instant access to the channel now. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for attending today's webinar session. All participants will be sent a feedback link and we appreciate your feedback for us to continuously improve our webinars and bring more new content for you. 
do join us in the next webinar session by Ustaz Muhammad Fazli Masri entitled Istiqamah Dalam Musibah Bangkit Mencari Hikmah on Friday, May 8, 2020. And also on Tuesday, May 12, we're going to have a special webinar session, a conversation with Yang Berbahagia Tan Sri Abdul Wahid Omar. Registration details will be posted on IPIM's Facebook and Instagram, Instagram pages. Before I end this session, I would like to thank our presenter, Tuan Haji Abdul Rahman Muhammad Yusuf, for all the knowledge shared with us. To all participants, thank you for joining Ramadan Mubarak. Stay safe and Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. This is Zahri Majahid, signing off.